Okay, so, so today we look at three suttas. Okay, so this is called Anum. So Anumana means in MN15 means Sutta number 15 in Majima Nikaya. Majima Nikaya is the book of middle length sayings, right? Yeah, altogether 152 the discourses, right? 152. So we are talking about 15. Okay, like all Sutta, I always like to start with, with this for us to reflect. Okay, this is uh, from His Holiness the Dalai Lama. This is from the Abhi Samaya Alankara. And if you want to read more from this book called Illuminating the Path to Enlightenment, which is a Lamrim text. Very, very, uh, it's actually a shorter Lamrim from Lama Songkhapa, right? Called Lines of Experience and Atisha's uh, The Path to Enlightenment. So it's a, this, this is a very interesting book. His Holiness uh, gives a commentary on two Lamrims. One is Lama Atisha's uh, Path, the, the, the Lamb on, on the Path to Enlightenment, and Lama Songkhapa's uh, Lines of Experience. Is, and this book is for free, you know. <laughs> right, you, you, can, you can Google, you can even download, right? I, I have a copy of this next to my, next to my bed, and I try to, try to read it every night before I sleep. Okay, so His Holiness says that we should rely not on the person, but the words. Rely not on the words, but on their meaning. Rely not on the provisional meaning, but the definitive meaning of the word. Rely not on intellectual understanding of the definitive meaning, but on direct non conscious experience of it. So before we listen to a sutta talk, before we listen to any dharma talk, all right, we should always remember the person is not so important, but the what he said is more important. So who is standing here is not so important. <laughs> so I'm not important, but what I, I say, if I say the right thing is important. <laughs> okay? So you should watch out what I say. Okay? So the person is not, not important. So it's, what his, his, it's not what I say, it's what His Holiness says. <laughs> and not, again, not what His Holiness says, is what found in the Abhisamaya Alankara. Just now I told you about the Geishi, the, the, you know, the, the title that some of the Tibetan masters, so they spend like maybe 10 years, 12 years to get the title called the Geishi, this rigorous study and practice. So this is one of the root texts that they go through, Abhisamaya Alankara. Okay, so rely not on the person but the word, so remember. So don't say, oh, I'm going for the Dhamma talk because, oh, that speaker has a lot of jokes. Huh? And then I go. It's because no joke, and you cannot talk. No, I won't go. So you don't go for the jokes, you go for the dumb. But if along the way he jokes, then fine. <laughs> but don't tell him, Bante, why no jokes today? <laughs> All right. Rely not on the words, but on their meaning. Having heard the words, think about their meaning. That means you reflect on the meaning, right? So what you have just heard. So hearing it is not good enough. You must think about the, the, the meaning. Okay? And then rely not on the provisional meaning, but the definitive meaning. In other words, everything that you hear has got two levels, two levels of meaning. Okay? Two levels of, of meaning, the higher level and the lower level, conventional level and the ultimate le level. And finally, whatever you have heard, what you have heard is all intellectual understanding. But whether are you able to put into direct non-conceptual experience, are you able to put into practice? You practice what you have heard, what, what you know, and then and then that becomes non-concept, becomes experiential in nature. Remember just now like I told you, wisdom through three levels. First level, you listen, all right, you hear. Second level, you think about it. And third level is, you, you make it part of your life. You experience it. All right? Like five precepts. First level is, we hear about the five precepts. Ah, oh, sounds good. Okay, not, not too bad, at least five. If I'm Christian, I've got to take ten. So at least Buddhist is easier five for me. <laughs> so you, talk, you say, okay, five, five precepts. So you, so you hear about it. Next, you think about it. Why am I accepting the five precepts? Then you look at the, the, the words, what it means. Just now I mentioned to you one word, it's sikha. Panati pata vera matni sikha padang samadhiya. That means sikha. That means you're telling yourself, I'm trying to practice. I'm trying to train myself. I'm trying to develop myself. Not to harm other living beings. So then you also expand your your concept of non-killing. Non-killing doesn't only mean that you don't actually kill the kill the, the, the being, but you don't harm the living being. Right? right. Okay. So that's a that's the so that so I think this is very important. It's called the four reliances. So whenever you listen to a Dhamma talk or you practice the Dhamma, always remember these four things. Okay. Okay. Let's let's now look at the sutta itself. Anu Mana Sutta. Do you, do you have it? Everybody got a copy? Right? Well, yours has got no color, mine has got color. <laughs> okay. I, I, as, 
Yeah, huh? No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, we, we should all be colorblind. Right? We should not be racist, right? We should all be colorblind. Huh? Okay, um, Anumana Sutta, it means inference. Okay, the first paragraph said, Thus have I heard, on one occasion, the Venerable Mahamogalana was living in the Baga country at Sumsumaragira, <laughs> in the Besakala Groove, the Deer Park. I think it's somewhere in the Raj, Rajgir, right? Rajagaha. There he addressed the Bhikkhu staff, friends, Bhikkhu friends, they replied. The Venerable Mogalana said this. So this discourse is not delivered by the Buddha. This word by Mogalana. You know who is Mogalana? So in the Theravada tradition, uh, we have two chief disciples. We have Sariputta and Mogalana. So Sariputta, as you know, is, is, the, is the clever one, right? the, the smart one, the, the analytical one, isn't it? Right? Of course, I, I, I don't mean Mogalana is not the smart one, not analytical. but Mogalana is more well known for what? Psychic abilities. Ah. So it is said that the Mogalana is is, is the n number one in terms of these EDs, the, the psychic powers, right? Okay, but this discourse, has, he's, he's not going to teach us how, how to develop psychic powers. <laughs> so, in, in fact, I don't think any of the discourses where Mogalana talks about how to develop psychic powers. Okay? So, psychic powers, if you realize, if you study the Buddhist text, they're actually a byproduct. They are a byproduct. You know the meaning, byproduct? Yeah. And because they are byproducts, so if one is not careful, one does not understand, one is not mindful enough, one can get attached to these psychic powers and then use it for the wrong purpose. In the Buddhist text, uh, do, you, do you know of one particular well known character who has psychic powers but who, are, who, who misuse it? Devadatta, right? Uh, Devadatta, right? So, so he also has, I'm, I'm sure he would have developed that through his meditation. So then the question, what type of meditation he, he, he practiced? <laughs> okay. So Mogalana is an example of one who has practiced uh, the meditation, all right? and then he has got this EDs. Okay. So thirst, okay, the thirst, have I heard everybody knows, right? All are veterans here, isn't it? Well, you can even remember which particular sutta, so you know this. Okay, the second para. Friends, though a bhikkhu asked us, let the venerable ones admonish me. I need to be admonished by the Venerable Ones. Yet, if he is difficult to admonish and possesses qualities that make him difficult to admonish, if he is impatient and does not take instruction rightly, then his companions in the holy life think that he should not be admonished or instructed. They think of him as a friend not to be trusted. Now, this second paragraph is the, is, is, you, you can say is the root of it. Yeah? So here, Friends, that means Mogalana is saying, friends, if a, if a monk were, were to say, let the venerable one, the venerable one, let, that means the elders, right? let the monks admonish me. You know meaning admonish me? Like, uh, like uh, reprimand or to, you know, well, like, like to advise me what, what is good, what is not good, so you admonish me. Then he said, Yet, if he is difficult to admonish, and he possesses qualities that make him difficult to, to admonish, for example, if he is very impatient, and he does not take instructions rightly, then his companions, the holy life, think should not be admonished. Now, what this means is, See, this, this word is in, in Pali, but it's, this is in English. Right? You look at the Pali, the Pali version, you've got these two words called Du Bacha and Su Bacha. Now, Du Bacha. The word Du from the word Dukkha. Remember the word Dukkha, the root word Dukkha? And Bacha from the word Vacha. Bacha means what? No, no, not Sacha. This is Vacha. Speech. Speech. You know, in the Eightfold Path, right? Uh, right speech. Right? Sama Vacha. Right? Speech. So, do Bacha doesn't mean that he, he, he's a bad speaker. <laughs> it means that he is difficult to speak to. 
So that's the, the, the Pali word in the text, do bacha. That means difficult to be admonished. That means it's difficult to speak to. Now, the whole thing, this sutta talks about what constitutes a person who is difficult to speak to. All right? Now, the second paragraph is basically this. Mongana is, is, is saying that, look, if a monk were to come and say, look, I want to be admonished. Right? Tell me what is wrong, what is right. And then Mongalana said, but if that monk who says that he wants to be admonished, but if he is impatient, but if he is someone who doesn't take instructions easily, then it is difficult to admonish him. Then he is what you call a do bacha. You follow? So that's what the second paragraph is. He is the do bacha. That means he is difficult to be admonished. Okay? You, you follow that part? So you've got to understand that part so that the, the, the rest will follow. What qualities make him... Uh, no. Then, okay, the third part is, so if it is impatient, then it's difficult to, to admonish him, right? And he doesn't take instructions rightly, or so difficult then. Then what, what happens is, then what happens, the other monks will think that this guy, he should not be admonished. No point trying to admonish him or instruct him because they think that he's not someone here translate not someone to be trusted not someone to be not someone that you should be close to not someone that you should associate closely with all right so this explanation is uh, from bhikkhu bodhi so so bhikkhu bodhi gave this explanation that the word trusted that someone not to be closely associated with okay because the, the Pali text itself just said the word trusted as trusted. All right? So what it means is that even if you have someone who comes to you and, and says, oh, you know, I want to be admonished. But then after a while you realize that he's a very impatient person. He can't even wait to, 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 to listen to the whole, you know, the, the whole discourse. And he doesn't take your instructions lightly. So what's the point of, of, of uh, admonishing him? <laughs> okay, so in this situation, best not to associate with him. He cannot be, be trusted. Okay, so this reminds a bit like in the Mangala Sutta, isn't it? it says that what is a blessing when you associate with the wise one, not associate with the foolish. Now that does not mean that we have no compassion for, for, for such people. It just means that at that point in, in, in time, if he's not ready, then let him be. Right? Just let, let, let him be. Then you have, maybe you think of other skillful ways of, of bringing the message to him. Okay? Right. So what qualities make him difficult to admonish? Now, one thing I just want to point out that all the three discourses that we're going to discuss today, they're all addressed to the monks. Of course, we are not monks and, or nuns, but then if we look at it, there are also qualities which we as lay people, we, we can also emulate. Right? So it's not that because it's given to monks, it doesn't apply to us. Okay? Right. So what qualities make him difficult to admonish? So there's a total of 16 there. Right? If you look at the next page, there are 16. Right. So I'll just run through very quickly the 16. What qualities make him difficult to admonish? Here a monk has evil wishes and is dominated by evil wishes. Okay. This is a quality that makes him difficult to admire. So even if a monk, or, or let's not talk of monk, even if a lay per per person comes and, he, and you know, he wants to be admonished, but if he has all these 16 characteristics, 16 qualities, it's going to be very difficult for you to, uh, to admonish him. The first one is, if he has evil wishes and dominated by evil wishes. Uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi has explained this evil wishes as ego-centered wishes. Evil, you may think, or oh, evil like he wants to harm someone, he wants to kill someone. Not necessarily that. But ego centered, you know, he's very ego centered, vicious. But in the uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi's reference, if you look at the note 213, yeah? you see the back there, you see the one, that there's a note there, right? 213. Well, yours is not in color. <laughs> So, so you have to look for a small print there. You see note 213? Can you see the note 213? Back page under notes? Yeah, page. 
page 4. Page 5? Yours is page 5, is it? Okay, alright. Oh, yeah, because yours is not double-sided. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay, page 5. Alright, so you see the word uh, notes 213? So here, Bhikkhu Bodhi is... No, this translation is by Bhikkhu Bodhi, right? Okay. So then you should, when you go back, you Google Ananganya Sutta. Ananganya Sutta, Manjima Nikaya number 5, paragraph 10 to 29. Right? Paragraph 10 to 20. So 5.1029 means Sutta number 5, which is called Ananganya Sutta, and then paragraph 10 to 29. Now there are some examples in that suttas, okay? Uh, where it says that, uh, for, for example, if a monk breaks, breaks one of the Vinaya rules, then he, he wants to make sure that nobody knows about it. <laughs> All right? or, if he, if, or if he makes a mistake, then he, then he wants the other elder monks, if they reprimand him, not to reprimand him in public, but to reprimand him in private, so that the other monks do not know. All right? Or like, f f for example, you know, when the, when the Buddha, when he goes around with his monks on arms round, and then the, the, the Buddha maybe, you know, will ask one of the monks a question and see if, if the monks can answer the, the question. So if someone has got ego-centered wishes, he will think, oh, let the Buddha ask me, then I can give the answer. Then all the other monks will think, oh, this monk is very clever. <laughs> you know, I mean, those, those, those kind of, uh, of thoughts. And then, uh, or you know, when, when, when there's a, uh, when, when the monks are going to arm, arms around, you know, then he, then he, he wished that the lay people will, will put him you know, right in front, you know, and give him the due, uh, due credit, you know, and things like that. So, so he feels, he, he wants to have all, all, all those uh, kind of ego-centered visions. So these are examples mentioned in the Ananganya Sutta. But those are about monks, huh? okay? So, but then as lay people, then, then, then we, we, we look at it. You know, even among lay people, you know, you know, I'm sure you have friends, you have colleagues, some people always like to be in the limelight one. Right, you, know, uh, you know, even if they come late, they'll push themselves right to the front. You know? Right, you know? you know, some people, they are just, just like that. Or? or some people, they just, you know, uh, they just ask questions for the sake of asking, so that people know, oh, you see, the guy. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that you should ask questions. No? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I'm just giving examples. But there are some people by, by, by their nature, right, by their nature, they always like to be in the limelight. Okay, so, so likewise, even, even the monks. So this is the first one. So if people are of that nature, then very difficult for them to, to be trained, so to speak. Okay, so they have to change. So la later we see the 16 types of uh, call. So if they have this uh, quality, he's called a dubacha, D-U-B-A-C-C-A. Now the second one. Again, a bhikkhu lords himself. What is lords himself? Praise himself, speaks highly of him himself, and disparages others. Maybe you know he, he he will come to his maybe this in this story maybe this monk he comes to his elder monk and he said, oh you know, come tell me if I have, have any faults. Then in the back of his mind he said, I'm no I'm sure he cannot find any faults. <laughs> you know so he's always have so high regards for for himself. So um, so he brought lots himself or he praises him himself. And he disparages others. He always talks bad about other people. Ah, oh, yeah, that one is uh, terrible. You know, never, never, you know, ne never help. You know, he come to the temple, you know, never help, you know, and, and so on. Always disparages other people. So this is a quality that makes him difficult to, to admonish. So it's also uh, difficult. So lay people. In fact, there's another, this, the, this call. Uh, Have you heard of Sapurisa Sutta? This discourse is called Sapurisa Sutta. Sapurisa means what? Integrity. Or, or, you know, or, or a, a noble person, Sapurisa Sutta. So in this Sapurisa Sutta, it talks about, 
it gives, I think, four, four, four types of, of behaviors. Right? One behavior is if, if a person, say, say a person, if you, if you ask, he don't reveal other people's bad points. You know, say, say someone is asked about Mr. A, he will not reveal Mr. A's bad points. But if he's pressed, hey, you know, but then, you know, I heard that this thing happened. Then he will try to say as little as possible and only what he knows. So he's, he's not in the habit of, of uh, talking about other people's bad points. So there's one type of, of purpose. And then the other one, if he's not asked, if he's not asked, he will reveal other people's good points. All right? If, even if you don't ask, even if you don't ask him about so and so, he, he will, he, he will, he will tell you, oh, so and so, you know, has done this, you know, has done that. He's, 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 he's good. And if you press more, he tell you even more. So he has this habit of telling good points, yeah, of praising people. So that's that's one 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 set, right? The other side is if he's not asked, he will not talk about his own good points. If you don't ask him, he will not. He will not go. Hey, you, you, you know, you know what, what I did. You no, know, I give dana. You know how much I donated. You know, you know, you know, you know. I got the best organic food. You know, I look around town. That's the best one, the most expensive one. You know. <laughs> so if you don't ask, he will not reveal his his own good points, right? But if you press further, he said, "Well, you know, I thought, you know, at least that's the least that that that, that, that I could do, All right?" And finally, if if he's asked. If he's asked, he no. Even if you're not asked, then he will talk about his bad points. <laughs> he's quite happy to tell you. You know, I, I, I need to cultivate this. I need to, to develop this. You know, I'm quite poor in, in this. But if you press more, he tell you all his bad points. <laughs> okay. So I, I won't go into the, the detail, but this is the essence of this Sapurisa Sutta. So remember, it is so it's very interesting when, when the, this is given by the by the Buddha. Not Sariputta Moga. So it talks about who is a person of integrity. So the summary of that, a person of integrity is someone who, who will not talk bad about other people. And even if you press him for, 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 for information, he is very reluctant that he will say it. All right? All right? But if it's, if it's a good point for other people, he will definitely say it. All right? Then when it comes to himself, if it's his bad points, he's quite happy to, to, to tell you. Uh, then he's a suvacha. Suvacha. He's easy to admonish. All right? Suvacha. You, you, you follow? It's easy to admonish. Okay? But if you don't ask him, he will not go around telling you about his good points. So one is about how he relates to another person, the other is about how he relates to himself. Right? Okay? So I think it's a very interesting discourse. You can read that. It's in. Anguttara Nika. It's a book of four. They said there are four things there, isn't it? Sutta 73. Okay, so that's the second one. Eh? Third one, a bhikkhu is angry and overcome by anger. So you see the next three, four, five, six is about he's angry and reproved by anger. He's overcome by anger. So, he, he, so he's always very angry, overcome by anger. He's angry and not only overcome by anger, but he's revengeful. You know, he wants to take revenge. Here means that he becomes hostile. Right? He becomes hostile. The first one is just angry. You know, angry, don't want to talk to you. He just walk away. But the second one is he's not only angry, he is revengeful. He come back and and, and beat you up, maybe. <laughs> so he's hostile. The fifth one is angry. And not only that, he's stubborn. Stubborn means what? He's persistent. He said, the more you, you tell me not to do, the more I will do. <laughs> All right? You know, that's, that's been stubborn, isn't it? So he persistent in his misbehavior. And then he will hang on to his fault. You know, he's stubborn. He says, what makes you think that, you know, I'm, that I'm so bad a person? You know, nobody says I'm bad. Only you say I'm bad. You must be worse. <laughs> so he's very stubborn, very painful. So the three, four, five, six, uh, angry. Okay? And then seven, he's... A, a bhikkhu is reproof and he receives the reprover. You know what is reproof? Like he's scolded, no? And he receives the that means he refused to admit he is wrong. No? But the second one is he re, he's, he's scolded 
he denigrates the, re the reprover. So instead of accepting criticism, he will say, hey, come on, you have your own fault, like you're worse than me. <laughs> Why are you trying to, to tell me about this? Mm. Right? So you will say that you have your own fault. So he denigrates the, re the reprover. He may even quote from the Buddhist scriptures, you know, easily seen are the faults of others, but hard indeed are your own, own faults. Uh, he said, see, you forgot the Dhammapada, you know. <laughs> All right. So, so he may even say that. So he may denigrate the reprover. And then number nine, again, the bhikkhu is reproof. He counter-reproves the reprover. He mentioned, uh, now he, he not only mentions something general, he mentions something very specific what he has done. He said, ah, you see, you remember? I can still remember, you know, I, I jot down in my iPhone, you know, on this day, you did this, you did that, you know, you know in my notes, you know. <laughs> or he may even make up some, some faults. You know, I say, he may say, you know, I've been hearing people say terrible things about you, you know, I just said, you know, because I've, I've been practicing Sapuri Sasuta, I never take bad about you. Any. <laughs> Actually, you are, we are terrible. <laughs> Right? So, so he counter reproves the re reprover. So you see, that's how our mind is capable of, 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 of doing things, right? Our mind can think of terrible things. Again, uh, Bhikkhu is reproved. He, pre he pre prevaricates. It means he tells lies. Uh, that's the meaning. He tells lies. He leads the talk aside. You know, sometimes he brings unrelated topics, not related to, 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 to this, right? Leads the talk aside. And he shows anger, hate, bitterness. Right? So if he has all these characteristics, so the text says he's a do bacha. That means no point you admonish him. The more you admonish him, you, you end up in a fight. Isn't it? Right? You, say some, you, you say something to him, then the guy said, you look yourself in the mirror. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. No more, no more question on that. Huh? Okay, so again, a bhikkhu is reproof and tell lies. Uh, he he prevaricates, he leads the talk aside, and he shows anger, hate, and bitterness. Right? That's number 10. Then number 11, he also reproof. He's reproof and he fails to account for his conduct. This is like maybe the summary of <laughs> all the rest. Huh? And then the last four. No, no, the, the number 12 is. Number 12 will be like his inner characteristics, you see? Whereas the, f the f 1 to 11 is like more his expressions of anger, his expressions of, uh, of not wanting to be reproved, you know? Whereas the, if you look at 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, it's more his inner characteristics, right? So 12 is, a bhikkhu is contemptuous and domineering. He is, you know, contemptuous, like in insolent, Insolent and domineering, he wants to control. All right. Again, a bhikkhu is envious. He's always envious of other people. You know. Then he may say, "Oh, of course, you can talk like that. You know, you are you are you are already you know very senior in the organization. You know, or you are already the deputy abbot. You know, when the abbot dies, you're going to be the abbot. You know, I'm still long way. You know. <laughs> All right. So, so bhikkhu is insolent. He's rude, he's contemptuous and domineering, very con wants to be very controlling, right? Like you, you read in the story of Devadatta, isn't it? he wanted to control, he wanted to control all, all, all the, the, the monastics during the Buddha's time. So, these kind of people, how, how are you going to train them? How, how, how are you going to talk to them? How are you going to talk sense to them? Very difficult, right? So they are dubacha. And then the bhikkhu is fraudulent and deceitful. Fraudulent means like he cover up his you covering up his inner faults. Huh? You covering up his inner faults. You know, we all have faults, right? So we try to cover up. Deceitful. Hmm. Maybe this is like he tries to show himself to possess good qualities, but actually he doesn't have. You know, like like maybe you know, you know, like <laughs> maybe 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 you maybe when he goes for the retreat, you know. You know, or you know, he's he very well behaved. You know, when 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 he's when he walks, you know, he, he walks very mindfully. Then when he sits, he sits down very 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 uh, mind mindfully. He sits down. He takes the the food. You know, one morsel at a time. He chew, right? Because he knows everybody's looking at him. <laughs> right? The moment nobody looking at him, he says, "Come, we're going to take you're take you're going to take the piece of uh, fried chicken or or, or or whatever." You know, 
So, so some people, you know, they like to put on a show, isn't it? Uh, you know? right, so, or maybe he walked, he walked very, mind, very mindfully, right? But, but that's not his usual self. So he tries to be deceitful. He tries to show himself that he possesses good qualities uh, so that people can see only his good qualities. Right? So he's not his true self. Not his true self right? Again, a bhikkhu is obstinate and arrogant. You know the meaning. Right? Stubborn, arrogant. And finally, again, a bhikkhu adheres to his own views. Holds on to them tenaciously. You know the meaning of tenaciously? Hold on very tightly, refusing to, to let go. He's stuck in his views. And he relinquishes them with difficulty. Very difficult to let go. This is a quality that makes him difficult to admonish. Friends, these are called qualities that make him difficult to admonish. So these are the 16 things. All right? So if you have all these 16 things, then, then it's very difficult for anyone to, to even guide you or counsel you or to give you good advice. All right? So it's something for us to reflect, isn't it? Something for us to think, are we, do we have these characteristics? Are we de deceitful? Do we try to put on a, a good show? All right? All right? Some people say only once a week when they come to the temple, they are put on. When you see him in a temple, he's so different from when you see him in an office. You know? The office is a real, real, real terror. But in the office, he's so meek. You know? He walks on his head bowed. <laughs> but in the office, he's like a terror. You know? Some people say, what? That guy? <laughs> Cannot be. You, know? you just don't believe it. Isn't it? Uh, some people have got those... We call it what a uh, persona, you know. They they, they put on the <laughs> or what is the one, Mr. Jekyll and what Jekyll, Jekyll and Hyde. Huh? So it's got two personalities, two personalities. This is so you are that kind. They're very difficult. So you see the Buddha's advice here, even though it's for monks, but I think it applies to to all of us, isn't it? Yeah. So it's each one of us, right? Because only we can judge our own character, our own characteristics. Right? So one to sixteen. So, as mentioned uh, early on, I think Bhikkhu Bodhi explains that the 12 to 16 is more like one's inner characteristics. Okay? Right. Now, the rest from paragraph 5 onwards are what qualities make him easy to admonish. So, in a typical, I'm sure you know what's coming, they're all the reverse. No, they're all the reverse. And Buddhist texts, uh, they, they like to, to put uh, what, they, what we call positive negatives. You know, like your precepts. Uh, instead of saying that you must be compassionate, they say you must not kill. <laughs> you know, instead of having say you must be contented, you say you must not uh, break the third precept. You know, so, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the, 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 the Buddhist way. Most of the Indian way, uh, telling you what not to do. The, the in, in Indian way. Uh. All right, so I will not go through the, the, the 16 because it's the reverse of all the... The six, what you should not do. Okay? But you can think of the, you can reflect on, on the positive things. Just pick one. For, for, for example, say, uh, para five, say, in, in, instead of angry or, or does not utter words bothering on anger, then what, are, then what how should you, you behave? You should utter words of kind speech, gentle speech, you know. It's useful speech, isn't it? Right? Then, you, then you remind yourself, oh, the Buddha talks about other parts in the discourses. You know, for example, the Vacha Sutta, the Buddha says, speech must be true, useful, timely, you know, gentle, and spoken with a kind heart. And then you can look at it in a positive side. But the Sutta always put it in the negative way. Right? This is the, uh, the Indian way. Huh? In In Indian philosophy, Indian philosophy is called neti neti, not this, not that. That means it always give you the negative aspect. Huh? Right? Okay, so it's just it's cultural, right? It's, it's cultural, but you know. but we're not we are not training you to be to be in Indians, right? So you don't have to. Do it. You can think of the positive neti neti, n e t i n e t i. Via negativa, via, via negativa. That means by way of negatives. But these are positive negatives. Isn't it? Like do not kill, do not steal, do not commit sexual misconduct, do not lie, do not take drugs and intoxicate. These are 
positive things but negative, expressed in a negative way. So we call it positive, negative. <laughs> okay? All right, let's, let's go on to para, para six, all right? Now, friends, a bhikkhu ought to infer about himself in the following way. So this is how you get the word anumana, the inference here. Okay? So this is where you have the practical advice on the right motivation. So this, this part is the practical advice on the right motivations to overcome our faults. So, so that we can move from being a dubacha to a subacha. Oh, that's what it's meant. He said, a person with evil wishes and dominated by evil wishes. So let's say, to use Bhikkhu Bodhi's uh, explanation, say ego-centered wishes, right? So a person with ego-centered wishes is displeasing and disagreeable to me. Now, if I were to have evil wishes and to be dominated by evil wishes, I would be displeasing and disagreeable to others, right? If you have these characteristics, those first 16 characteristics, do you think you, you'll be liked by other people? Probably not. So if that's the case, would you want to have those? So you make an inference. You make an inference. All right? A bhikkhu who knows this should arouse his mind. Thus, I shall not have evil wishes and be dominated by evil wishes. Okay? All right? So you, you, you follow this how this is got to be the in, inference. And then 2 to 16. So the 2 to 16 is a repeat of the first 16, para 2 to 16, you see, para, sorry, para 6, sub para 2 to 16, a person who lauds himself and disparages others, a person who adheres to his own views. These are the negative ones, right? You know how, how to, you, you read that, right? Okay, if I were to adhere to my own views, hold on to them tenaciously and relinquish them with difficulty, I would be displeasing and disagreeable to others. So a bhikkhu who knows this should arouse his mind thirst. Okay, so, the, so para 6, you got two parts, right? So these are the evil, the, the, the ego-centered part. So in other words, you start with your, yourself, you, you tell your, yourself, if I have all the 16 characteristics mentioned, would I be pleasing or displeasing to other people? I will be displeasing. Therefore, I will not do it. Right? So you make an in, in inference. In the same way, when we practice our precepts, the first precept says that I undertake this precept to abstain from killing or harming other beings. So then you reflect, do I want to be harmed? Do I want to be killed? No, I don't want to be harmed. I don't want to be killed. Therefore, should I harm another person? Should I try to kill someone? I will not do that. This is based on reflection. Second precept, I undertake this precept to abstain from stealing or from taking things that, belongs, that does not belong to me. Then you reflect, do I want my things to be taken by other people? Do I want my property to be stolen by other people? No, I do not want that. Therefore, I will not take other people's property. So you undertake that precept based on knowledge, based on understanding, after reflection. Not because, oh, because I'm a member of BGF and clause number three in BGF constitution say I'm going to observe five precepts, so I observe five precepts. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. But you observe precepts because you reflected on it and you tell yourself, hmm, it's something that I should follow. So it's after reflection. Okay? So para seven, now friends, a bhikkhu should review thus. Do I have evil wishes? And am I dominated by evil wishes? If when he reviews himself, he knows I have evil wishes, I am dominated by evil wishes, then he should make an effort to abandon those evil unwholesome states. But if he has reviewed himself, he knows, hey, I have no evil wishes. I am not dominated by evil wishes. Then he can abide happy and glad, training day and night in wholesome states. The word happy and glad, I think the word happy is pity, P-I-T-I, -I, isn't it? P-I-T-I, -I, right? pity, that means joyful, is joyful, happy and glad. I think glad is pamoja, P-A-M-O-D-A, -A, pamoja. So, so glad and happy. So, so because you reflect on yourself, yeah, I don't have this qualities. I don't have these negative qualities. Therefore, I'm happy with myself. All right? So I'm happy and you know, I'm glad. And I can continue to train in these wholesome states. Okay? So, so then para 7, the sub, para 2 to 16, 
Uh, then he asked himself, do I praise myself, disparage others? Do I adhere to my own views, hold them tenaciously, relinquish them? No, I don't do all those things. All right. Therefore, it's okay. Therefore, I'm happy with this. All right. So the summary, para eight. Friends, when a bhikkhu reveals himself to us, if he sees that these evil, unwholesome states are not abandoned in himself, then he should make an effort to abandon them. But if he when reviews himself to us, he sees that they are all abandoned in himself, then he can, he can abide happy and glad, training day and night in wholesome states. So the point here is, how do we uh, make an effort to abandon them? You see the para 8, second line? He said, if he sees these evil, unwholesome states are not all abandoned in himself, then he should make an effort to abandon them. How, how, how does he make an effort to abandon them? What, what must he do? What must he practice? Hmm? What does he practice? How, how do you make an effort to abandon these negative thoughts that arise in you? Yes, there are, there are many susutas that talk about you counter with the positive thoughts. The key is mindfulness. Right? The key is mindfulness. How you practice your mindfulness. There are different thoughts. Right? Okay. There's one susutta called, uh, what's the name? Vitaka Santana Sutta. Uh, the, the, the discourse on how to overcome distracting thoughts. <laughs> Very long name. Huh? Vitaka Santana Sutta. How to overcome distracting thoughts. Okay? I cannot remember which is in Majima Nikaya, but I'm not, not sure which, but which particular. Mm, mm, no. Okay, I'll I, I write down. It's a discourse on removal of distracting thoughts. <clears throat> okay? Alright, so that, that sums up the, 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 the suttas. And then the, the final one, Moggallana says, just as when a woman or a man, see, the Moggallana was, uh, was, was more gender friendly. Huh? He started with a woman. He says, when a woman or a man, young, youthful, fond of ornaments, yeah, because these are more for the women, uh, fond of ornaments, uh, <laughs> right? and viewing the image of her own face in a clear, bright mirror or in a basin of clear water, sees a smudge or a blemish on it. She makes an effort to remove it. But if she sees no smudge, no blemish, she becomes happy. So it is a gain for me that it is clean, that my face is clean. So too, when a bhikkhu reveals himself to us, when he can abide happy and glad, training day and night. This is what the Venerable Moha, Moha, Maha Moggallana said. The bhikkhus were satisfied and delighted in the Venerable Maha Moggallana words. Okay? So it's, so it's a short discourse. Uh, but it tells you a lot of things, right? It tells you about the 16 characteristics that we should try to avoid. Okay, any... Now, I just... I don't have time to go through all the slides, but you have them anyway. Uh, so this is just to explain it. You have this all right in your notes, right? <coughs> That's just explanation. Um, let's see if there's anything. So admonishment, so this is the, the, the one. Okay, so the, the key word is impatience and does not take instruction rightly. Because of this, it's not to be trusted, right? All right, so these are the 16, remember? Remember the 16? So, evil wishes, uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi in his text, he tries to explain more like ego centered wishes. Right? Okay. So, easy to add to, to admonish. Easy to admonish is the word subacha, which I told you, easy to admonish. So, he is patient, he takes instruction rightly, and he can be someone that you can trust, someone that you can associate with. Okay? So these are the, the ones. As you can see, it's always very easy. Just put the no in front. <laughs> okay? So this is uh, what we call the via, via negativa. <laughs> right? So this is a neti neti, not this, not this, not that. Right? Or via negativa. Right? So, in, so in France, is, if he has evil wishes, he's displeasing. So if I would have it, therefore I will be displeasing. Therefore, he said, I will not have evil wishes. So he reflects on himself. 
if I have this character, people don't like me. Therefore, I will not have it. All right, it's the same. So, wise reflection. So, if you reflect, do I have evil wishes? No, I, I don't. All right? If he has, then he makes an effort to abandon them. But if you review, he says, I have no evil wishes. I'm not dominated by evil wishes. He's happy. He's, uh, he has pity. He has pamoja. He's training day and night in wholesome states. Okay? All right, so it's the same. All right? So and uh, that's the, 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 the final one. So if, if finally, if it's like a man or a woman, useful, you know, he, he looks into a, a basin of water, you know, or, or clear bright mirror in a basin of clear water, he sees a smudge or a blemish on it. So she tries to remove the, 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 the blush. So this will be the, the thing that he will do it. All right? So too, when a bhikkhu reveals himself to us, when he can abide happy and glad. Okay? All right. So we, we have your much anticipated lunch at 12, but maybe we'll, we'll, we'll talk about 15, 20 minutes on the next discourse. All right? Can we have the, the next slides? <coughs> In the meantime,